the hell is going on, everyone? Good afternoon and welcome to Nothing But Net, presented to you by Fantasy Phenom. I am your host, JC. Today, I will be covering the NBA nine-game slate for Friday, February, or February, Jesus, my apologies. It's been a long day, I'll explain as we go, but... November the 24th, the day after Thanksgiving. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday with your families and everything. I hope it was a good day for you all. I hope everything's going well for you today. Um, I want you to come check us out on Twitter. You can find us at Fantasy underscore Phenom. And while you're there, look me up and find me at Liquor underscore sweet that is l-i-q-u-o-r underscore sweet while you're at it come check us out at youtube there you can subscribe and hit the little bell next to it so you get instant updates for all our posts for the uh, live audio or the live uh, video podcast as well as the audio podcast when they are posted there you'll also find the links to all our stuff of the iTunes, our Facebook free group, as well as, I'm sure, if you haven't heard yet, you, well, you're here now, or you would soon anyways, but our website has officially been opened as of Tuesday, and it's had me so excited, everyone. I woke up Tuesday, the website was open that day. And I haven't even been to sleep yet. I've been working my butt off trying to spread the word. I mean, you probably find a, a flyer in an outhouse in the middle of a Nebraska farm somewhere. That's how much I love this. And I'm trying to do whatever I can. And I would instantly like to apologize to everybody. I hope I did not let anybody down earlier. Normally I'm posting much, much earlier. And because there was the early game, I always try to do the the lineups as I do. And as you know, they're not lineups saying, hey, take these lineups and go win money. Because that's not what I do. I, there are little dummy lineups that I usually do. I work on them all night, post them nice and early in the morning. And I base it on ideas and thoughts and, you know, sometimes I'll even, I might mention them, but I, I'll skip over what we all might consider lock plays or obvious, you know, like hey, Kyrie Irving, like tonight, he's a he's a good play. He's a pretty solid play. That's a, that's a given. So I, I might skip over him and mention some other ones just to get some ideas out there and something that, you know, I give you an idea and maybe you've got some ideas and between me and you and maybe some thoughts other people have given you, maybe together, all of us, we can go take down a GPP, who knows, that's what it's all about, but definitely, I would love for you to come check out the website, because I'm telling you right now, like I was telling a, a gentleman I was speaking with the, uh, yesterday, who came and joined us, I call him the coach, good guy, he asked what we could do to help him, because he's been on a bit of a losing streak, and I had told him, you know, I can't guarantee you that you're going to come join us, and within a couple of hours or a couple of days, you're going to start winning money. I can't guarantee you that. You never know what's going to happen. But our group is far more than a group. We are much more like a family. That's I'm always, always saying that. It is a phenom family, because... This is a, I've never been part of a group before until I met Kyle last year and things worked out the way they did and I have been alongside him and Mike and everyone that has, uh, has jumped on board, you know, with us and everything and and everybody that is a part of this phenom group or family, which I also started the other night, I was joking around that it's not even like a family anymore. It's more like a goat farm 
is this greatest of all time, DFS. That's what it feels like. Because, I mean, of course, we all love to win. And it's not even always about the money. It's just we love to win. We love to compete and win and this and that. But you know what? I could say this, and I could be speaking not just for myself, but for every single member of our community. If I can't win, then I'm going to bend over backwards and do whatever I can to help you win. I want our family to win. The Nat, to me, is a win for me as well. That's what it's all about. And we've had some pretty damn good big winners. We even had people representing in the the big Roto Grinders tournament last year in Florida and, you know, the live big tournaments. And, I mean, we've, we've done pretty damn well. We haven't even been together completely for a year yet. I don't think it becomes official till I think, roughly January. Then we will have been together for a year. So, but what I did tell him, I did promise him this much, that it certainly won't cost him a penny, and sure as hell it don't hurt him, to come check us out. You get a seven-day free trial, and, you know, come check us out. Check out our sheets. You know, we have our own private chat room as part of our website now, and we cover each and every sport that is part of DFS on FanDuel and DraftKings. And each room has its own, or each sport has its own chat room. And everybody volunteers, and and there's articles that are written. There may not be cheat, you know, sheets done quite yet for that sport as we're working our way up to it. But we're slowly getting to where there's more audios coming out, and there will be more live videos that are being produced as as we are getting more and more evolved covering all of the sports as we grow and we are growing daily we have come a long way and we're just getting bigger and better we have a very dedicated family and by the time that seventh day hits whether you even want a penny or not yet you're going to know that you're on the verge of hitting that victory and you're going to you're going to hit it often. You're going to tell. You're going to be able to tell that. And then you're also going to realize that it's only nine ninety nine a month. We're not like most of the other sites where it's a large amount of money per sport or this or that. It's nine ninety nine a month, and you get everything. So it certainly ain't going to hurt you to to like I said, at least come check us out. So do yourself a favor. Come check us out. All you can do is benefit from it. Sure as hell can't hurt anybody. And even if it is only for five, six, maybe the seven days of your free trial, we're sure as hell going to enjoy your company. Because we love everybody. And, you know, the chat rooms, there are almost always people there. So a little up and down at the moment because we're making the transition from the river group that we were using and do our new uh, thing. But there's always people in the chat room because there's always, everybody's trying to be around as much as possible. So there's always somebody there to help somebody if somebody's looking for help, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I, like I said, I haven't slept in, since I got up Tuesday, so I am a little tired. It has been a long day. I owe everybody an apology because the uh, lot of major complications with the recording today or I would have had everything up earlier. Things did not go very well recording-wise. I thought I had everything recorded. I go to end it to find out that it stopped recording early on, did not have even a quarter of it recorded, and then I saw the time. I was in a bit of a panic mode. I felt like I had let everybody down, so I tried to hurry up and just do the, the early slate and get it, out there before the the game and I had to email myself the recording after I got it done for some reason it got hung up in the email on top of it by the time I did get it posted the game had already started I felt like a I really had failed my family as well as our friends that aren't members yet or you know for whatever reason or whatnot we still consider you friends 
We care about you. We're still wanting to help everybody. That's why we have a free Facebook group, which is probably the hottest DFS and all-around season-long fantasy group on Facebook, by all means. And just, I felt really bad. So, yeah, I sent out my apologies on Twitter, and I left a big comment for everybody there on the YouTube page. And I even went into the chat room, and I talked with everybody, and I, I made my apologies. And it took me a little bit to calm down, because I, I felt pretty horrible. And then I, I started to do this recording, and it screwed up again. And now this is my second time doing it, and I'm praying <laughs> that it works right this time. I mean, I am glued to it right now, because I never had this problem before. And all of a sudden, everything has just gone haywire in the last 48 hours. And when you're in my situation, you just, you do what you got to do. Keep your head up, keep your feet moving forward. And you try to do the best you can with what you have to work with. And... My main concern is just to be there to help other people. That's my joy. That's what I love to do on top of this all being to do with sports. And I'm kind of tired of babbling and trying to explain everything because I still feel guilty as all hell. So I do sincerely apologize. I hope that I did not mess anybody up by not getting that early slate out and, you know, having everything posted earlier like I normally do. If that did happen to uh, slow things down or, or mess things up for you today, again, I sincerely apologize. Hopefully that will not happen again. I'm going to do whatever I can to try to upgrade and whatever equipment-wise that I have to do so that we don't have this issue again. So one way or another, I'll figure something out. I won't let you guys down again. You guys mean too much to me. I love my Phenom family, and I love our Phenom friends. You guys mean the world to me. So, enough of all that. I say it's about damn time I shut the hell up with all the stupid babbling. Well, not stupid babbling, but just babbling. And get in to discussing this goddamn slate tonight. What is it? Nine game slate, uh, Friday, I almost said October, and I already said, but January or February, November 24th, day after Thanksgiving. And this is a pretty interesting slate tonight. I really like it. There are a lot of are quality plays here, good value plays, good uh, top price plays, some very interesting plays all around. Now, after I was able to go ahead and get the post made of the early slate, even though the, the game had already started. I was back in the uh, uh, th at the website chatting with um, Kyle and Mike and Jeremy for a few, and the news had came in, which was a bit of a surprise, that uh, Draymond Green and Kevin Durant would not be playing tonight. And that had gotten quite a few people a little excited and started changing some of their strategy for tonight on some players that they would be playing. And I was loving it because some of the players they were thinking of turning to, I already had sitting in the lineup that I'm looking at right now, which granted is my dummy lineup. You know, I had this thing created by 637, 738 o'clock in the morning which is when I started to do the recording, and here I am. It's, what, 3.30 in the afternoon, and I'm still trying to <laughs> get through it. That's how long and stressful day it's been, but I don't mind that at all. I can deal with anything. It's just my biggest concern is letting all of you down. So I'm going to start off here, which actually now the uh, computer's frozen up a little bit. And I hate when it does this, but it usually only lasts for a quick minute. And I can see most of my lineup. And I can also grab my cell phone and 
thanks to apps, I can look at it there. But I started off here with the point guards. Now, there's a lot of good plays here. I think with with Westbrook, he's been playing pretty well. Got to give him that. At 10-6, myself, I'm going to fade him. He's facing Detroit. He's at home. It's a good play. But I don't know if I want to pay up like that. And then, you know, you got the Curry, especially now with Draymond and Durant both out. And it's like, well, I don't know. That, that's a good-looking play there. And you're right, that is. But, you know, he's at ten grand even. And, I don't know, that's another one that I would pass up on. Now, Kyrie, I think, is a great play. He's facing the Elf tonight. They're at home in Boston. He's averaging 38.2 FanDuel points per, fantasy points per game. But I'm looking at, I'm dealing with FanDuel right now, and I'll go over uh, DraftKings once I finish this. I like Kyrie tonight. He's playing great ball. He's at 8500 That's a good price for what he's been putting up. So I do like that play. Um, he's not who I've chosen yet, but I'm just saying I do like him. He's a good play, just like the, the guy right below him here on FanDuel, Kimba Walker, which granted a great deal of us mostly like him at home as opposed to on the road. I mean, everybody knows that. Kimba, he tears it up at home. But if you look at his game log, he's had some pretty damn good games this year on the road even. I think it was against Chicago in Chicago that he put up, I think, what was it? And it was just recently, like 60, 60 some points. Yeah, it was at Chicago. Put in 38 minutes, 60.7 FanDuel points is what he ended up getting. Uh, he had another 60 point game, but that was, and as I mentioned, Kyrie tonight facing Orlando. That was against Orlando. I don't know if Elf played that night or not because, uh, which is Gary Payton trying to avoid some of the nickname stuff because not all of us know every player's nicknames and I could be sitting here mentioning Elf and could be somebody new to the uh, DFS community and not have a damn clue who the hell I'm talking about until I mention his real name so if that's the case and I do apologize so but I like Walker Cleveland's not very good at the uh defending the guard at the moment he'd have Calderon on him Shepard still isn't uh, playing. It did come out that Derrick Rose isn't even with the team right now. He left and is, I guess, rethinking his basketball career. I guess it seems like um, Isaiah Thomas is a little closer to coming back, so maybe Derrick, he's getting a little depressed. I don't know. But what I did do here is I went with Dennis Schroeder. I like him. He's at home. Got New York coming in. I just, I like what Schroeder's been doing. He's sitting at $7,400, averaging 34.3 fantasy points per game against New York. New York's been playing pretty good ball, that's for damn sure. But I like what Schroeder can do. I like his ceiling. I just, I think that this is a nice play at a decent price for 7400 Last game was uh, the 22nd. They faced um, the Los Angeles Clippers. He put in 32 minutes, 19 points, three boards, seven assists, one steal. And he ended up with 34.1 FanDuel points. Game prior to that against San Antonio, at San Antonio, with 31 minutes, 14 points, three boards, nine assists, two steals, and 33.1 FanDuel points, and then the game prior to that was at home against Boston, the number one defense in the NBA this year, and he puts in 36 minutes and gets 23 points, two boards, nine assists, two steals, and 42.9 FanDuel points. I just, I like what he's been doing. I think that he can uh, put in an all-around solid game. And I like the price that he's at. And I'm not saying he's a lock by any means, because there are 
better play or just as good plays for cheaper, I think. I mean, you could turn around and keep looking like I. I mean, I like Drogic. I have him as the second point guard, and you got him going into Miami. And some people in the group had mentioned Teague earlier, and I was looking at that, and you know, you got Teague averaging 32.3 fantasy points per game at 6,900, and then you got Drogic averaging 31.4, you know, what, one point shy fantasy points per game, and $600 cheaper. I like Drogic. That's who I went with alongside Schroeder with this lineup. Um, you got Chris Dunn. He's been playing pretty well. I don't know about, you know, going into Golden State. One thing, I don't like Golden State. Part of that's probably because I'm a major, lifelong Cavs fan. But I do think that those guys are idiots. I do think they have gotten quite cocky and arrogant. I do think it's going to come back and haunt them at some point, if it hasn't already, to a degree. Um, you know, you do have Chalmers still. It's, you know, his price is going up slowly, but you got him at 6100 going into Denver. I think um, Collison is a decent look at anyways tonight at, at 5900 sitting at home against Toronto. Then you got with New Orleans, and, you know, this brought up, Kyle had mentioned it, that Rondo's not much of a defensive player, so that makes Mike James and Eulis both for Phoenix quite interesting plays. And there's only a $100 difference between the two of them. So those are two guys to look into if you want to come down on your price a little bit and spend elsewhere. So those are two quality GPP plays right there to look into. And I mean, you could even, you could keep going. You got uh, Corey Joseph. He's been playing pretty damn well right alongside Collison, or, you know, backing him up anyways. But Joseph at 4,400 has been putting up some pretty good numbers. You know, you've got Moutier for Denver, who is sitting at 3,800, and he's averaging damn near 20 points, fantasy points per game at 3,800. And, you know, Memphis, they don't even have Chalmers. You know, they got Conley, or they don't have Conley. They got Chalmers starting because of this. So that could open up a lot for Moutier right there at $3,800. You got Calderon, who will be starting for Cleveland. Granted, he, you know, he's got his hands full with, uh, oh, now I just got myself all sorts of twisted around because my lady just got back from work. But, uh, Walker, I mean, that's good. Gonna keep him quite busy, but he's still, he's at 4,200. That could be a, a sneaky little play. Ish Smith, 3,600. Granted, facing Oklahoma City, but, so I mean, there's always decent plays to look at here and there. Uh, moving on to the shooting guard. These were plays that I, I'm pretty much locked in on. I, I can't help it. I love Jeremy Lamb tonight. There's a, you know, a lot of good plays around. I know people really like DeRozan and he's facing, the guy he's facing coming into Indiana. A lot of people love Old Depot and can't blame him the way he's been playing this year. And he's sitting at 8,300. Averaging just under 40 points, fantasy points per game. He has been literally on fire. He is like a fantasy phenom. He's been playing so damn well. That is just kick ass. Love him. But I like Lamb with um, a two mount tonight. Lamb will be uh, starting. Now, I did read something earlier, and I was telling the guys about it, that he would be starting at small forward, but then just clicking on this thing real quick and FanDuel. And it says he will start at shooting guard in Friday's game against the Cavaliers. So, either way, Cleveland's defense 
once in a while they decide to show up in the first, maybe second quarter and decide to stick around for the entire game. I think that's happened once or twice this season so far. For the most part, they don't decide to show up to about the sixth minute of the fourth quarter and pull out of the game and win it. So I could see Lamb having a, uh, a pretty damn nice game tonight all around. I mean, even against the last game they played against Cleveland, he came off the bench. Batum was back that night. He put in 21 minutes and put up 24 and a half FanDuel points. And, you know, he at $5,500, that's, uh, that's a pretty good option. He's going to get a lot more minutes tonight. I know um, a lot of people are going to be all over Devin Booker, Tyreek Evans. He's been playing lights out to 7,300, Booker 7,200. It's hard not to jump on Tim Hardaway Jr. And I am doing multiple lineups. So, I mean, a lot of these guys will see multiple lineups of mine. I'm just going over the one that I happen to have in front of me at the moment, which the next shooting guard, the second one in there I have is Will Barton. And I love him because Millsap being out, that's got... Chandler moving up to the power forward starting, and that's starting Barton at the small forward and jacking up his minutes. And I love that. And he loves it. And it's been uh, two games so far that that's happened, that he has started like this and put in the extra minutes. First one was against Sacramento, 36 minutes, 25 points, 6 boards, 5 assists. 37.7 37.7 FanDuel points. Two days later, faced at Houston, both these games on the road, 35 minutes, 20 points, 6 boards, 3 assists, 2 blocks, 2 steals, and 41.7 FanDuel points. And this just popped up on my computer. NBA rumors, Derrick Rose may not return to Cavs. Don't know what's going on right there. I don't have time to sit and read the article, obviously, as I'm trying to uh, take care of this for everybody. And I need to start working on my lineups for tonight as well. So, but I like uh, I like Barton a lot tonight. But there are some damn good plays here. Drew Holiday, I like him at 6,400. I think he's a good play facing that Phoenix team. Um, I don't know. A lot of people like Wade. With me, it's up and down with him. I don't know. I mean, he's still, he's sitting there at six grand. I would definitely myself much rather, I mean, he's coming off the bench. He's playing well. He's looking good. But if I can get it, turn to somebody like Lamb at 5,500 who will be starting. I will jump on him first. You also got Gary Harris starting at 5,900. You also got Avery Bradley starting at 5,700. Dion Waiters at 5,500. Even uh, Kent Bazemore could be a nice solid play. He's at home with New York coming into town. And then another good play could be Justin Holiday at 5,200. For Chicago as they go into Golden State tonight. And an often not mentioned, talked about much at all. I love the matchup. A good possible play tonight at $4,400 is each one more for New Orleans as they go into Phoenix tonight. He has been playing some pretty solid ball all season, averaging 21 fantasy points per game. And like I said, sitting at $4,400, got to like that. Um, a player that I had been looking at all night and that I, I like, and it was brought up during the uh, the little bit of time I spent with the guys in the chat rooms before I came to record, uh, Marco Bellinelli for Atlanta. I like him. And, I mean, there's there's other players, and there are some other players that you can even look at. You you can always take the, the the tournament challenge and or 
chances with J.R. Smith. I mean, he, he can light it up at any moment. And same with Kyle Korver. So those are two possibilities. And granted, they're going to come out of my mouth almost every goddamn time because I'm a Cavs fan, so ignore some of that. I can't help that. I do apologize for that. Then you could even... Now, this is something I was thinking earlier. I don't know now with Draymond and Durant being out, but if they were going to be playing, then I was definitely considering Nick Young at $3,000 because I was thinking that that could turn into quite the little blowout. And if that were the case, then that could give Nick Young a decent amount of minutes at $3,000. And we all know how he is. He gets a, a few shots going, and he'll light it up. So, but I, like I said, with those two not playing tonight, that kind of changes everything around a little bit. So I don't know if I would be playing him or not. You know, moving on to small forward, you, you got your plays with LeBron. He, he's a bit pricey at 11-9. He's also averaging 52.5 fantasy points per game. <laughs> and... I don't know if anybody happened to catch some uh, thing I had found on Twitter. I had retweeted it last night, and it was showing that he is putting up some of the best numbers he's ever put up in his career. And the only time in his career he's put up numbers this good are the four different times that he happened to have won the MVP award. That's how well he is playing right now. So, maybe that 11-9 isn't that much money for what he could do. And as much as I like what he's doing, and who the hell is Charlotte going to stick on him to slow him down tonight? Gilchrist? <laughs> yeah, piss off. But at the same time, then I look at it like, that's 11-9. When I could sit and just drop that down to 8-7, and I'm going to drop down in points a little bit, but I got Paul George facing Detroit. And, wow, PG-13, he's been tearing it up. I like him a lot. And you can get $500 cheaper even, and... Butler's been a bit more consistent lately. I don't much care for him myself, but I know a lot of other people do. They really like him. They like what he's been doing lately. But then the next play down I like is uh, T.J. Warren. I think he is a great play tonight facing New Orleans. I don't know what in the hell uh, New Orleans is going to do to stop him. He's sitting at 7,600 with an average of 32 fantasy points per game. I think he is a nice, solid play tonight. He is uh, the first small forward I have in position in this lineup. I think he is a nice, solid play. And then, I mean, you've got a lot of good small forwards to look at tonight. I mean, you got Jalen Brown. you got Fournier. you got Prince for Atlanta. I think he's a good, solid play. Um, Courtney Lee, he's put up good, solid, all-around numbers all season. Nothing, he's not going to tear down, you know, bring you home 60 points or anything like that. But he's going to get you good, he's a good cash play because he's going to get you the good, solid numbers each and every night. Um, Kid Gilchrist, you can get him for $5,100, but he's averaging 18 fantasy points per game when you could sit there and turn right around and for the same price get Denzel Valentine who I like especially if Draymond and Kevin Durant are going to miss tonight which they are they're already out you can get him for 5100 he's at, as it is as well as he's been playing lately in the minutes that he's getting he's putting in 22.2 fantasy points per game so I really like him tonight. I already had him in my lineup before I even knew that Kevin Durant and Draymond were going to be out tonight. Uh, he was uh, off a little bit the other night. 
that was one of his lowest minutes played in quite a little while, all the way since the uh, 1st of November when he put in 16. It was against the slow-paced Utah Jazz, put in 22 minutes. He was only able to put up two points, three boards, four assists, and only brought in 11.6 FanDuel points. And, you know, the, the uh, night prior to that, uh, that was a back-to-back. -back. The night prior to that against the Lakers, 37 minutes, 17 points, 9 boards, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 38.8 FanDuel points. And that's, you know, the night prior to that, or not prior to that, but, you know, the game pr previous against Phoenix, at Phoenix, 36 minutes, 30 FanDuel points. Against Charlotte, 32 minutes, 34 FanDuel points. So, I mean, he's been playing some damn good ball as of late. I really, really like him. And I think he's got a pretty good opportunity. And as, as we all know, any of us that are NBA fans and we pay attention, we watch, and we got to do our research when it comes to this stuff. But I don't care how much research you do, you got to watch the game, too. And if you watch the games and pay any attention, then you know as well as I do or anybody else that when it's, there's teams like the Cavs, as good as they have been, and as good as, uh, I hate Golden State, but as good as they have been, then teams like Chicago or teams that, you know, even Brooklyn that has been looked down on the last few years, when it comes to playing teams like Cleveland or San Antonio or Oklahoma City or Golden State, these teams step it up and they are ready to go out and try to prove themselves and show the world that they can play some ball. So I would not be surprised if he pulls off a phenomenal game. And not just him, but quite a few of the Chicago players tonight. I like several of them. Um, so it, you got Bogdanovich at 4,900, averaging basically the same amount of fantasy points per game as Valentine at the small forward position against Toronto. So yeah, I think he's a nice, solid play tonight as well. So there's there's a lot of, uh, of things to look around, things to look into. If you look at Josh Jackson, $3,800. Now, what turns some people away is he's only averaging 17.6 fantasy points per game for Phoenix. But what I love is he's sitting at $3,800. And if you do some research into it, I, like I, I had found out that he is the second highest usage or second or third on the team. I mean, they love this kid. They really do. But he's just not always getting the minutes. And that's what hurts him. And if you sit here and you look at his game log, the other night on the 22nd against Milwaukee, 17 minutes, 5 points, 4 boards, 3 turnovers, 6.8 fan duel points. Then the game prior to that against Chicago, 22 minutes, 7 points, 7 boards, 4 assists, 20.4 grand duel points. Against the Lakers, 18 minutes, 7 points, 2 boards, a block, 3 steals, 20.4. Against Houston, 20, he gets 28 minutes, 16 points. I mean, they're so up and down because... They're not giving him the consistent minutes. If there is a way that we could rely on that, then I think he would be a steal of a play. If you look back at the uh, beginning of this month and the end of last month, he had like a seven, eight game stretch where he was playing mid-20s minutes-wise, and all his games were in the mid-20s to high 20s in points. So, I mean, that's somebody I like. It's definitely somebody, if there's a way to figure it out, definitely somebody to keep an eye on. 
And this is a, a sneaky little play that I kind of like. And this is a, depending on how many lineups you're doing, if you're looking for a cheap play to throw out there in a tournament, there's two. It's, well, now there's two that I like at the small forward position tonight. The one that I had originally, and I've suggested him a few times, and seems like just about, not all the time, but quite often when I have missed him, he has worked out rather well for me. He will definitely see a, a lineup or two for me tonight. But Lance Stevenson at home with Toronto coming in, and he has just been... Nothing lights out, but he's been playing pretty solid ball. I mean, if you look at his last, what am I looking at here? One, two, three, four, five games. And that's Orlando, Miami, Detroit, Memphis, Houston. Last game on the 20th, 23 minutes against Orlando, three points, 10 boards, six assists, 23 FanDuel points. His one low, shitty game was against Miami, 22 minutes, 2 points, only 5 boards, 1 assist, and 8.5 points. But then, you know, facing Detroit, 18 minutes, 13 points, 8 boards, 2 assists, 22.6 FanDuel points. Against a, a, a fairly well defensive-minded Memphis team, 19 minutes, 8 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 21.9. Against Houston, 23 minutes, 8 points, 10 boards, 3 assists, 23.5. So, I mean, he, he's getting in there in the, the mid, the low to mid 20s in points. And I, I know we, especially when we're trying to get in the, the high 300s to even possibly 400 in total points. So I know we're, we're really wanting to hit in the 30s. And he's done that a couple of times this year. Not very often, but a couple. But at $3,700, if he can get you into the mid-20s, or the higher, mid to high 20s, I find that to be a pretty good play. And I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment. I mean, it's been a long, long, long-ass day. C yeah, all right, there it is. C.J. Miles, he's out. So, I mean, I think this could be a good opportunity for him. And the other play, who's sitting at just a little bit cheaper, is for Golden State at $3,300, and that's Caspi. With Durant being out tonight, I like Caspi. The other night, I think Durant was out when they played Brooklyn. Caspi put in 22 minutes, 12 points, 8 boards, an assist, 2 blocks, and put in 29.1 FanDuel points at 3,300. I'll take that every time. You know, the, the following game, he did play against the Oklahoma City team which they lost, Durant did play, so he did, he put in 14 minutes that game, and 11.6 boards, and that was it, so I mean, he got 16.2, but things are a lot different when Durant's not playing, you know, Durant didn't play the other night, he put in 22 minutes, and damn near 30 points, so I like Caspi in this situation, I think he is a nice, solid, all-around play for Golden State, especially at that price. And that gives you so much more money to play with. So, that's my thought on that. But like I said, I, I like, uh, with small forwards, I, I've got T.J. Warren and Denzel Valentine. Then at the power forward, I couldn't help it. I, I, I had to spend up here. Definitely in my lock, even on the uh, all day. If you did listen to it, you already know that. Um, Anthony Davis, he may be the glass man. I pray he doesn't uh, 
chip a nail or trip over a uh, a hair or something, do something stupid and hurt himself. But man, even at 11-3, that's a lot. Averaging 51.2 up against this Phoenix team. As long as I'm praying that Phoenix can at least keep it respectable so that he doesn't end up sitting on the bench at all because it's a blowout. And I'm sure there's a lot of people hoping for the same thing because I know there's going to be a lot of people going after Boogie as well. So I think he's a, a nice play here. Um, a lot of people are going to be looking for Zingas. I think he's a pretty solid play. He's sitting at 9,300. He's averaging uh, basically 44 points per game. You got uh, Aaron Gordon. He's been a little up and down as of lately, going into Boston at, at 7,400. I, I, I think I would just totally go over him tonight, fade him away. You got. Um, what could be interesting is the um, Oklahoma City Detroit game where you got Carmelo Anthony at 69, and then for $300 cheaper you got Tobias who's been playing great. Now for me, I'm looking right past them both, and I'm going right at Chicago, going into Golden State, and I love the uh, Chicago rookie, Mark Cannon. I love him. I think he has just been playing awesome. I mean, if it wasn't for the way Simmons has been tearing it up for Philadelphia, I, I would have to say this is probably number two right now at Rookie of the Year. He has just been very good. His last game against the slowed-down Utah team was probably his worst or second-worst game of the entire season. And it was his... Worst game of the entire season. He only put in 23 minutes. He had 3.7 boards, a turnover, and 10.4 FanDuel points scored. And then the games prior to that, I mean, you got the Lakers. 31 minutes, 30 fantasy points. Uh, Phoenix, 33 minutes, 41.6 FanDuel points. Charlotte, 30 minutes. 34 FanDuel points. Oklahoma City, 32 minutes, 35 FanDuel points. This kid has been tearing it up. I like him a lot at $6,300. I think he is a great play. I think he is going to be prepared to go into uh, Golden State and, and hold his own, especially when he's not going to have that Durant or Draymond sitting there putting that intimidation over him, or trying to put that intimidation over him. So I, I really think that he feels quite comfortable and has a field day myself. Maybe I'm an idiot. Well, that's a stupid thing to say, because I know I'm not, but... Then, there, you know, there's still some good plays here. you got to like Thaddeus Young... I think he's a solid play at six grand for Indiana. Tatum for Boston still, I mean, sitting at 5,800. I like him. That's another one who's been playing some damn good rookie ball, along with the man just below him for $100 less for Atlanta, up against New York. He will be getting some pretty good minutes in. John Collins, he has been playing some damn good ball, and he just keeps getting better and better and better. I really like him tonight. Um, as I said, I already told you, my power forwards in this lineup are Anthony Davis and Mark Cannon. So, but in, at some point, some of my lineups, Collins will definitely find his way in there, just as I also like Sabonis. His price is down to 5100 I just, I really like him. I think he's been playing very, very good ball. I like him a lot. Um, Pascal Sakam, or however you say that, for Toronto. I like him. Um, 
I know a lot of people are liking a Baca tonight. I haven't touched them this year. I'm in no big hurry. I'm not impressed. I'm going to sarcastically, jokingly say that that uh, Ferry for Denver got to jump on him at 4,400. And I am just being a dick. I don't think he'll play. I don't think a lot of people will realize it right away until after the other game when he did not play coach's decision. A lot of people were complaining and throwing a fit. Chandler gets bumped up to the power forward position with Barton starting at the small forward position. And depending on the matchup, is going to decide whether or not Kenneth is going to even come in and play. And I don't see that happening tonight against Memphis. I mean, I, I may be wrong. I'm not a damn NBA coach. But with the way some of these people coach, like Hornacek, I'm certainly qualified compared to them, in my opinion. <laughs> They're just as qualified. Um, I don't. I like. I used Marvin Williams just didn't play him like he did Crowder. He just hadn't quite gotten there yet. I do like uh, Jeremiah Grant for Oklahoma City, averaging 20 points, based in Detroit tonight. I like that play. Um, Bobby Portis, with him going into Golden State, no Draymond. I think that's got some good potential right there with a fairly decent ceiling. Just like a good possible potential play is uh, Frank Kaminsky. Something to look into if you're curious. Him sitting at 4,100, and he could find himself into more minutes depending on what happens with Howard and, you know, with Zeller and, and, and Howard and how well Kaminsky is shooting tonight. So that's something to look into. I'd have to say that's, I mean, I did see that uh, Jared Dudley is supposedly able to come back and play tonight. I, whether he actually plays or not, I don't know. I would be surprised if he does. But at the same time, I would be not surprised if he doesn't play. So, I mean, that's flip a coin there. So that's, that's about it, I'd have to say, for uh, where I'm looking for the power forwards. And then at the center position, this is where it gets a little funny. Now, I know quite a few people that are going after Boogie, and I love Boogie. He's sitting at 11-4, averaging 54.7 fantasy points per game, going against that Phoenix team. That is a nice, nice, solid play. I like him a lot. And then, you know, the next one down, you got Cat at home, which is where he's at his best, at 9,300. And he will be facing uh, Whiteside, which... Uh, Whiteside's usually a good, solid player, but lately he just seems flat-out frickin' lazy as hell. I mean, he's still averaging 38.5 points, fantasy points per game. I don't know if I would pay up that much for him. Drummond, he's sitting at nine grand, averaging uh, 42 points per game, going up against Adams tonight in Oklahoma. See, these are people I would pass on. Um, you got the Joker going up against Gasol tonight. Now, he is currently questionable, but they are saying he is probable to play tonight. Something to do with his ankle. He got sprained his ankle Wednesday in the uh, blowout loss to Houston. So, I don't know if I'd even want to take my chance there. Now, I do, again, like Love, because Howard is not the greatest of defenders at the center position, especially the fact that Love can take him out to the three-point line, and, and Howard don't like going out there. So I do like that. you got Bukovic. Um, he's a quality center. He, he'd been, he hadn't been playing his, his greatest as of late. 
though he is still putting up 34.3 fantasy points per game, sitting at 7,800. So that's a, a little toss-up there. Probably somebody I would fade. Um, Turner, I've been debating on that one all night long because I like Turner. He is only averaging 32.9, sitting at 7,700. He's facing Toronto tonight, and he is at home. So, I would still seriously have to give that one some thought, but I do like Turner. you got Howard, who's been playing some good ball. He's averaging 34, and, you know, you can get him for $100 less than Turner playing at Cleveland tonight. So, but I think before I would take Turner or Howard, I would definitely be looking all over Al Horford, who has not been as sharp the last couple of games. But he has been having a very solid season. He sits at 6,900, averaging 33 fantasy points per game at home with Orlando coming in. And we all know Boop, Boop can be a good quality starting center offensively, but the man plays shit defense, and that makes me like Horford even more, so I think he's a, a nice, solid play right there, and that's not a bad price for him, 6900 that's a bit of a steal in many ways, and then you still, you've got some other good plays sitting here, as the prices continue to go down, Canner, if Hornacek can get off his dumb ass and remember to play him a, a good quality amount of minutes, is going to give you good points. I mean, he's already he's going to give you right now basically 30 points as it is per game, fantasy points per game, just as Adams at um, $200 cheaper is going to give you basically the same amount of fantasy points per game. Um, I know some people are looking at Balanceuanus for Toronto. He's Averaging basically, what is it, um, 21.3 fantasy points per game, sitting at 4,500. I don't really know what's going on with him. I don't know if I would want anything to do with him. I do think I might play Plumling for Denver, sitting at 4,400, and just because I don't know how comfortable and how well that ankle is for Joker, so that might mean that uh, Plumlee could get some, some quality time tonight. So that w that is going to have me uh, something I'll be definitely looking into. And then the one play that I love, I locked it in from the start, and that is definitely Monroe. And it's something that I have read numerous times. They are looking to trade him. They want to show him off. So he can earn or get teams interested in trading him. I do. I have heard and read that Cleveland is a team that is definitely looking into possibly uh, going after him, and that they wouldn't come up off the uh, Brooklyn first round pick, but they do have their own first round pick this year, and they, from what I have read, would be quite interested. And coming off that first round pick of their own to bring Monroe on over to Cleveland. So we'll see what happens. But I, I do like him. I think he's a, a solid play tonight. That's who I will be all over more so than not. And that right there, my friends, is the uh, main lineup for the main slate on FanDuel. Like I said, that's Schroeder, Drogic, Lamb, Barton, TJ Warren, Denzel Valentine, AD, Laurie Markannon, and Greg Monroe. And then, I don't care too damn much for uh, um, DraftKings, but I know so many other people do, so I always jump over here and try to run through things real quick. I'm definitely much more of a FanDuel person, but 
here on uh, DraftKings, especially I'm noticing the time. I'm trying to get the, everything up so that I can start working on lineups, and I want you guys to be able to hear this and, and work on things. And again, I apologize for such the delay today. Um, here at the pointing point guard, and this lineup is it's so much similar to what I just got done announcing. Um, I went ahead and went with Schroeder at the point guard at uh, 6,600. I like that. I think that's a good play, obviously. I'm going to stick with that. Um, at the shooting guard, I went ahead and and, uh, and threw uh, Etwan Moore in there for New Orleans, sitting at 3,700 against that Phoenix team. I like that play. I, uh, I just couldn't stay away from it, so had to throw him in there. At the small forward position, I went ahead and, and jumped on Jeremy Lamb at 5,100. I really like Lamb today against Cleveland. I think he is a great play, especially at 5,100. I just, God, I just love him, and it, Watch, he's probably going to end up being the one that makes me look like an idiot tonight, but it's all good. He feels good to me tonight. I like him. Got to follow my gut. Um, power forward, I went ahead and went with uh, AD again, the glass man. He's a 10-7 here, so that makes me a little bit more comfortable with him. So I do like that. Then it, at the center position, because I, I had made some changes there, near the end of it, but at the center position, I do have Sabonis. Um, I like this play. Like I said, it was hard to stay away from him on FanDuel. Here he's at 5,700. I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm, I might still make a change there. This is not my final lineup. Like I said, this is a dummy lineup for now. i still got a couple hours to go. Then moving on to the guard position, could not turn my back on this guy here at all. I don't care what site it is. The way he's been playing, I love Tim Hardaway Jr. right now. I really do. And he still, I mean, sitting at $6,600. I think that's a steal right now. And same with the, the guy I have at the uh, next position, the forward position, sitting at the same price, $6,600. And that's T.J. Warren. So I, to me, that right there's two steals in a row, both at $6,600, and you got Tim Hardaway Jr. and T.J. Warren. So I really like those plays right there. And then following that up at the utility position, I threw Greg Monroe out there at $4,700. And that still leaves $300 in the bank. To do, you know, if I need to and want to do a little bit of uh, last minute maneuvering and some pivoting here or there, if uh, some other news pops up and some surprises come out, we'll see what happens. So, like I said, though, that's Schroeder, Etwan Moore, Jeremy Lamb, AD, Sabonis, Hardaway Jr., TJ Warren, and Greg Monroe is what I have here on DraftKings. And I think that is pretty damn nice and solid. And I, I do go at all these as uh, GPP tournament plays. I do need to start getting myself a bit more in the habit of playing cash. But haven't quite gotten there yet. I just, I love the excitement of the tournaments and this and that. And I got to realize I, I want to make money too, I guess. <laughs> I guess just with the situation I've been in, and now I'm about to meet my dogs. But anyways, I'm going to have to say that it's time to pretty much call this quits for tonight before I have to literally permanently mute my dogs. Oh, God, it's been a long day. Now they they got me wanting to beat them up, and I love them. Not like I do my phenom family, but I do love them. But I love you guys all a 
whole lot more. Because actually, they're not my dogs. They're my woman's dogs. <laughs> and I love her a whole lot more than I do them dogs. Especially when they're barking. And I'm trying to talk to you guys. So anyways, I do wish you guys nothing but the best tonight. I want you to go out there and kick ass. And as I have been asking lately, please give me some thumbs up. That lets me know if I'm doing things fairly well, making you guys happy, giving you guys some good information. If there's things I need to work on. Um, leave me some comments if you've got any questions. Ask away. I try to pay attention so that I can answer those questions. Um, you can reach out to me on Twitter as well. And I don't know if uh, anything good happens, which I'm sure it will for many of you. And you want to, uh, if you're in the group, look me up later and hit me up in the NBA chat room and post your uh, picture of your winnings and stuff. And, let me share that with everybody out on Twitter, or if you're not in the group, hit me up on the uh, the comment section of this uh, post. And let me share that out there with the with everybody on Twitter. Let me show everybody what you what you did. Let's show it off. So uh, I wish you guys all the best. Go bring home some bacon. Take down a GPP, and I will be back. Hopefully everything's working tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow morning covering uh, the uh, Saturday slate. So until then, good day, good night, goodbye everyone. Good luck.